My name is Devonta Triplett, and welcome to another season of Power Your Story Season 6, a podcast from Ray Grand Training Center High School in Chicago. In this episode, we'll talk with Janae Bennett from Black Girl Gamers about our one of our favorite things, video games. Links to learn more about Black Girl Gamers, and Janae will be in the show notes for this episode at PowerYourStoryPodcast.com in the episode description in your listening app. Thank you. We hope you enjoy our podcast. All right. So, hi, Janae. My name is Brandon. Hey, Brandon. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. My name is Devante. Hey, Devante. How are you? I'm doing great. And how are you today? Pretty awesome. So, we're going to give you a few questions and you're going to answer them. Okay. I should start off first. So when do you start playing video games? I officially started off when I was about five. Uh, We got a PlayStation, the first one. We had a Nintendo, but I wasn't really old enough to play. When I first started playing, I was about five when we had a PlayStation 1. And what is your favorite video game? That's really hard because I really love Tomb Raider and I love Uncharted. But I also really like puzzle games like Scribble Knots and stuff like that. So I think I have more of a favorite type like a genre, which is going to be more action adventure and puzzle games that I have like a specific favorite video game. Who's your favorite character of all time in video game history? Oh, man. You know, it used to be Ezio Auditore from Assassin's Creed because I was just in love with him. But yeah, so he would definitely be up there with one of them. I think Nathan Drake and Lara Croft are like the the same sides of the coin. And then probably also Zarya from Overwatch. I really love her a lot. Why do you love video games? It gives me an escape and also it connects me to other people in their culture. So like if I've had a hard day, if I had a long day where I feel like, you know, I just didn't get what I wanted to do, I can always hop on a video game and pick any game and find like my escape. But then also it allows me to play with other people, which allows me to connect with people that I wouldn't normally get a chance to. And do you play, do you strictly play with women? Or with men as well? I play with both women and men. I think I mostly play with women because I strive to connect with them and let them feel comfortable playing online. When you were growing up, did you know you wanted to be in this kind of work? And did you ever want to do anything else? So when I was growing up, I knew I wanted to be a journalist, but I didn't know that I didn't even think that I would ever be in anything video game related. So pretty much... The only two things I ever wanted to be were an advertiser designer. So the person who makes the commercials, because I love commercials. I know who says that, right? So I wanted to make commercials. And I then after I was like, you know, I don't really want to make commercials, but I want to like report news. I want to be a journalist. Then I kind of pretty much stuck with that ever since I was 10 years old. What do your parents think about gaming? Did they support you when you started? Absolutely not. You know, I had an internship at NBC, so my mom was all like super proud and like, oh, you know, you're going to be on NBC, you're going to do this. And then after like my internship, I kind of just got into the gaming thing, which my mom felt like was a lot of regression instead of moving forward with journalism and like, you know, being on like Channel 5 or something like that. But come to find out, and I just found this out in December, is that my mom is kind of like a gamer. She told me that she used to play a lot of Mario with my dad like Mario and Pac-Man and stuff like that. So overall, she loves gaming. And now she's coming to understand what it is. But in the beginning, she was not here for it at all. So let's talk about Overwatch because it's one of our favorite games right now and Apex Legends. In Overwatch, what type do you like to play best? Oh, I'm a tank. Through and through. I'm a tank, 100%. I just got into, like, flanking, but I'm a tank. I pretty much almost play all of the tanks, and then flanking, and then, like, healer, but a very specific type of healer. Like, if we need a healer on the team, then I'll probably go into playing Moira, but, like, if not, I'm tanking and flanking all day. Zarya's my favorite. It started out as D.Va. My very first character that I played with was Junkrat, and then I moved to D.Va, and then um, Roadhog, and then Zarya. And Zarya is just my favorite, so I just stick with her. Okay. Well, I would say mine would be D.Va, and for healer, it would be Lucio and Junkrat for DPS. Other than that, what's your comp level? 
I have no idea. I have not had the confidence to do comp this year just because I wanted to get better at what I wanted to do. And I also just got Overwatch on PC as well. So I've been switching back and forth between playing it like on PlayStation and PC. And when you switch back and forth, your skills don't transfer. So now I have to learn how to play with like a mouse and a keyboard. And also the level that I was at on PS4 is not the level that I'm at on PC, which is where I got it first on, which was on PS4. Oh, I'm a, I'm an Xbox Overwatch player. Oh, are you? You know, I have it on Xbox as well, but that's mostly for like community night and stuff. And our next topic is, who's your favorite Mortal Kombat character? So my favorite Mortal Kombat character has nothing to do with whether or not I'm able to play them. But I really appreciated Jade and Tanya from the last one. Oh, and yeah. I was really good with Ermac, though. Mortal Kombat is the type of game where I let the character choose me. I don't just choose the one that I really like. That's what I'm learning about in fighting games. It's not always about who you like. But I really, really like Jade, Tanya, and Raiden. Hey, I'm on Alfred. I'm a gamer, too, though. I'm a gamer, too. Hi. Samir. Zamir and Al, right? Yes. Yeah. Nice to meet you both. Do you pay every day? I try to. So you guys caught me at a really funny time because I just came back from London for a video game event. And when I got back, I got like extremely sick. Like I was bedridden and everything. So I try to play every day. So yesterday I got up and I played Apex Legends and Dragon Ball and like that was it. But I try to play every day, whether it's like on my phone, trying to do a little something where I have like a little quick puzzle game or even I know Sudoku technically isn't like a video game, but I'll play it on my phone. But for the most part, Part. Yeah, yeah, I play every day. How many hours per week? How many hours per week? I try to cap myself at about 10 to 20. But if I found myself doing all other work and I also stream as well, I will do at least like 30 to 35. What well, pace travel? Yes. So I just went to London. I've been to a couple of different states. I've been to California. I've been to New York. I've been to Massachusetts. I've been to Wisconsin. I've been to Jamaica. Those are just a few places. What favorite place? My favorite place is going to be... You know, I don't know. I just came back from London and I loved it. You know, I love every place that I go to, though. So I don't think I have a favorite. I think as long as I have a good time in whatever place I'm in, I'm pretty much having, having fun. How do you stay connected with your games while you're, while you're all traveling? What's your setup? That's a great question. So if I'm going for a convention in a different city... One, I'm probably helping out with the gaming room, so I'm able to bring my own PlayStation. And two, I have a Switch. So if I want to play something, I can play on my Switch or I can just bring my whole console. It's very rare. Like, I never move my PC unless I'm doing things for, like, Extra Life, which is a video game charity for kids in the hospital. So I either bring my PlayStation or my Switch. Can you tell us a little more about Extra Life? Sure. Extra Life is a gaming charity centered around, for mostly in Chicago, it's for Lori's Children's Hospital, but they do hospitals everywhere. And what happens is, is every year they have a game day and they recruit all these people to live stream for them 24 hours. You don't have to go the full 24 hours, but people are playing games for 24 hours a day, raising money for the families and for the kids that are in St. Lori's Children's Hospital, which is just an example of the hospital here in Chicago. It's a lot of fun. You can give donate to them year round or you know you can stream in their name and then whatever donations you get you can send it to that hospital or any hospital of your choice that is connected to extra life okay what do you think are some benefits of gaming Gaming allows you to be a problem solver. You get to meet other people. And, you know, especially if you're playing online, you get to meet other people. So your True. tolerance for understanding goes up. You can learn about other people's culture. You can learn about other people. It's a good and a bad thing that people get a lot bolder when they're behind a mic and behind a screen because they may tell you something that, you know, they weren't particularly comfortable telling someone else. Or, you know, they may say things to you that they have no business saying. But the benefits of gaming are going to be like motor skills. So you're a little bit quicker. Your hand-eye coordination is a lot better. Your problem-solving skills go up. Your, like, group your group work and group think skills are just uh, a little bit better. Uh, what do you 
look in the game to write about as a journalist? So when I am reviewing a game, I there I actually have a, a list. So when I think about, hey, I want to review a game, I go through the list and there's a list that tells me about, you know, I sh- what I should be looking for in the story, what I should be looking for in the music, what I should be looking for in like the sound effects and the replay value. And replay value is just when you want to play the game over and over again, like Mortal Kombat yeah. has a high replay value because you're not really there for the story. The story's cool, but, you know, that's only just a piece of it. So when I play a game, I look to see if it's interesting, if it's interesting to me or if it would be interesting to someone else. Because I've reviewed other games that aren't interesting to me, but are interesting for other people who like those type of genres. And so I look for things that people enjoy about those genres, and then I highlight them while I'm writing about the game. Do you go to college or study to become a journalist? I did go to school to become a journalist. I went to school to be a broadcast journalist. I went to Northern Illinois University, which is about like an hour or so away from here. And I did media studies, which entailed like communications and learning about like print journalism, paper journalism, like actual writing, and then broadcast, which is what you see people do on like ABC, NBC, and CNN every night. Where did you get your passion for journalists, why do you love it? My passion for journalism, honestly, honestly, came from like Sesame Street, The Simpsons, Us. Superman, right? Because Kermit the Frog was a journalist and I loved Kermit the Frog. Peter Parker is a photojournalist and I oh. love taking pictures. You know, Clark Kent, same deal. He's a journalist. Lois Lane is a journalist. Kent Brackman from The Simpsons is a journalist. And so these are things that I was watching when I was younger. And I just thought it was so cool to be a journalist. You were in the know. You got to go to the exciting pieces. You know, when it happened, you had to be on scene and everyone had to, you know, relay and get their information from you. So that's pretty much where my passion comes from. And that's the interesting part. I get to At this point, I get to write about whatever I would like to write about. And it's not so much as, you know, what's hot and what's popular, because that's not always fun for me. So I love it. I love gaming journalism or esports journalism because I'm really into like reporting on competitive video games and stuff like that, is I get to talk to players and I get to ask them about them. It's not always just about scores and did you win and how well did you do, because you can always watch the replay for that. You don't need me. You know, like I can recap it for you, which would take up less time. But I really like talking to them and being like, okay, well, you know, how did you feel going into this match? You know, what does this mean for the people back home who support you? What are you trying to do further in the community, you know, to to allow people to follow your path? What's your favorite character or Apex Legends? What's your favorite character? Bangalore. As of right now, it's Bangalore, and I think Pathfinder. Isn't he the robot? I'm testing him out. Hello, my name is Justice. Hi, Justice. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Kiana. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kiana. Nice to meet you. Okay. (laughs) What is your opinion about violence in video games, exactly shooting games? Does it cause gamers to be more violent or is it more of a stress release? My opinion on violence in video games is that there's going to be some, right? I don't think there's any way to avoid it, but there are video games that don't have violence. I know for me that like my stress release sometimes is coming home and playing Overwatch, which is like technically violent, but it's more of a teamwork. And it's only a stress release if I win. If I lose, it's not a stress release because I'm like, I'm just as frustrated as before that nothing is going right. This is the one thing that I want to go right. So I don't know if it's so much about violence as it is about being like, okay, I want everything to move to move smoothly. And for a long time, the meta or the norm for video games have been, you know, like team kills, team plays, you know, centered around guns. Like even Overwatch has a capture the flag mode where you know about capture the flag, but like you're shooting people, right? You're shooting people and then letting them respond. So I definitely think like capture the flag can be a bit of a stress release, but I'm not a super fan of all of the violence. I know one of my least favorite, which is like everybody's favorite is Grand Theft Auto. I think that's a little bit too violent. You know, it's not until someone explained to me that like, hey, you know, 
video games are kind of like a representation of what people have been going through, kind of like music, right? That's why it's a big deal, why, you know, there should be a good amount of representation for black, brown, and all types of people in video games so that we can all feel included. And someone had to tell me, like, you know, like, I resonate with GTA or Grand Theft Auto because that's things that I was like used to seeing and I wasn't used to seeing that at all. So to me, I was like, this is too much. This is absolutely too much. So violence in video games can't be avoided, kind of like the movies. You're going to have some, but I don't agree with it and I don't disagree with it. I know that's not really a, a good answer. I think it's unavoidable. Some games like Assassin's Creed, where it's kind of teaching you history, but putting a spin on it, because not all of it's true. Of course, there weren't like a League of Assassins. But you know, you're going around killing people, but you're also killing people who, who are being detrimental to like, you know, the rise of like Roman, uh, the Roman Empire, like, you know, you're killing people in the Roman Empire and things of that nature. So it's necessary at some points, but it's not always a good thing. Yeah, it goes 50-50. Why is Black Girl Gamer important? Black Girl Gamers is important because it, ju it does just exactly what I was talking about. It creates more representation and more visibility of like, this is who your audience is. I didn't create Black Girl Gamers. I'm just a part of the elite team. I'm mostly into esports. It was created back in, I want to say, it was either 2017 or 2016. I think maybe oh. it's more of 2016. And it's important because it gives visibility to say, there are a lot of Black women who play video games, but yet we don't see ourselves in video games. And it's unacceptable because we're spending our money to buy your product that doesn't reflect us at all. Yeah, mostly I see males. No offense, mostly I see males, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, but it, it's not mostly males who play. It's not mostly males who buy video games or any of that. Okay, what kind of awareness or message you hope to share? Black Girl Gamers hopes to share that, you know, diversity is needed within video games and esports in any capacity within the gaming industry, within the tech industry, within the movie industry. We just want to show you that we are here and we need to start seeing more of us. And as we start seeing more of us, we can show you, you know, the people that need to be connected with because... A lot of companies go out and they do research, but they don't include black women. So you have something that doesn't represent black women, but are catered to black women. And so we're just hoping to share that type of awareness that black women are here and we play video games and we're not stereotypical and there's many ways to represent us. You sent out a good message. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Kiana. My question is, what are your plans for the future for yourself and where do you see black girl gamers in the future? So the plans for the future for myself, I am currently creating a portfolio for UX design, which is like user interface. So what that is, is like when you open up your phone and how it looks, I'm learning how to be a designer for like mobile apps and web applications and everything like that. And I'm also still pursuing my esports journalism career, but more on camera instead of just writing. Cause I write really well and all that stuff, but now I kind of want to take it to the next level. So those are the two things that I'm doing for our black girl gamers. We we hope that we can continue to empower Black women to play online with other people. One of the biggest problems that we found in uh, Black Girl Gamers after doing a survey is that a lot of women face harassment, a lot of women face racism, and a lot of women aren't comfortable like streaming with their cameras on or just being online and playing with other people so then they don't play. So Black Girl Gamers is definitely going to continue to further the initiative and further encourage women to be in the gaming industry, women to be in the tech industry, and to encourage ourselves from within and to give us the courage that, you know, we belong here too and no one's going to shut us out or silence us or put us to the side. How can we learn more and become a part of Black Girl Gamers? So we're pretty much everywhere, right? So we are on Facebook, and the Facebook group is only open to Black Girl Gamers. And then we're on another application called Discord, which is kind of like a social media where anyone can join. We're also on Twitter and Twitch. 
So definitely we have a website up that you can go to and learn about what we're doing. I just came from a Black Girl Gamers event in London where we host different events. We host different meetups in different cities for just, you know, Black Girl Gamers who just kind of want to be around each other and just kind of vent or, you know, play games with each other and all those things. What else do you do besides video games? I draw a little bit. I'm learning about like typography, which are like different fonts and how to create them. I try to like be creative and create a t-shirt every now and then. It helps me to get better with my uh, user experience design, my UX design stuff to just kind of be a bit artistic. I like to read. I love movies. Oh my gosh, I love movies so much. What else? What else? I used to go hiking when I lived in Colorado, but I can't hike here. So, and I would say I would go to the beach, but Lake Michigan doesn't count. Otherwise, I I do like to go to the beach. And I love traveling. Yeah, and me and you have a lot in common. I like to draw, I like to read, and I love movies. Yeah. Okay, what advice do you have for someone who wants to get into streaming? The advice that I have for someone who wants to get into streaming is love yourself. (laughs) Like, because you will try to go crazy trying to please other people and do, you know, because like, I don't play horror games. And so many people have been like, you should play horror games. And I'm like, no, I love myself too much for that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't want to do that because it's scary. And I'm not here for you laughing at me. You know, I'm here for you laughing at me, but not in the capacity of me playing a horror game and getting freaked out. And then I can't sleep at night and, you know, you're sleeping just fine. So it's a lot of time and commitment. It's dedication. It's really consistency. Even if you do it for two hours a week or two hours a day, play stuff that you like. Don't just play things because they're hot. So play something that you like. Find an indie game. Find a regular game. Even if it's an older game, but you like it, the fact that you're enjoying it, people will enjoy you enjoying it. Like, for example, I'm not a huge fan of The Sims, but when people I like are playing The Sims, I will watch it because it's funny. They're funny. Their stories are entertaining. It doesn't have anything to do with me actually liking the game. I just like watching that person have fun. Janae, I, uh, me and you got something in common with uh, horror games. Yeah. I don't like them. No, um, it's too scary. I played Resident Evil, the demo, and it was 30 minutes of me screaming. Like, I literally had my eyes closed and my hand on the mouse. Like, I'm not watching. No, I couldn't even watch me play, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, I think there's one game, like, um, Find Nice Surprise. I'm pretty sure you heard of it. Oh, yeah. I didn't even waste my time trying to get that game. Nope. I was watching it. I was closing my eyes, too. Like, oh, no, the jump scares. Nope, nope. I'm good. Nope. One thing I hate about different kind of video games or something or certain video games is dying in them. Yo, yo, that is the (laughs) truth. Like, especially if you're close to something and you have to make it there. Like, I've died plenty of times right before the checkpoint and then it starts me all the way back over and I'm like, you know what? (laughs) I'm just going to put this down and I'm going to leave it for a few days and then I'm going to come back to it because I really be in here trying to like not break my controllers. Dying is so frustrating. Yeah, Like I was so close. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I got like a few questions. This is regarding like for a female video game characters. So I've always been a fan of like a lot of female video game characters, whether it's like Samus or Lara Croft. What kind of quality you like to see in more uh, female characters, whether it's like black, Mexican or anything else, like for diversity or just like personality wise, what kind of quality you want to see them? I would like to see them be more clothed. If we're being honest, I would like them to wear a lot more clothes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I agree that they need to be more clothed. (laughs) Yeah. And that's part of the problem of representation. So they're catering it to like men and this and that. Like, I'll give you an example. Cranium is a company that came out with an esports jersey dress mm. for women, but it looks like a cheerleader's outfit. And they're selling it for oh. $53. <laughs> and they admitted that no women had any type of say in the process 
or the making of this outfit. It's like dead winter outside. And this doesn't have any sleeves. Yeah. It looks super short. You know, it's things like that. Like, if we just talk about the clothes, then we can go on. Because once you respect me in clothing, you'll respect everybody enough to put them in that same armor. Yeah. I think Monster Hunter did a better job with armor, some armor, because my Monster Hunter character was a black girl and she was mostly clothed. And I appreciated that. But, you know, you don't you don't always get that luxury. So I would like to definitely see more diversity, more hair, more skin color options, actual skin color options, not just dropping and pasting in skin colors. Right. Mm -hmm. More hairstyles. More professionally done hairstyles. I don't need this 70s afro anymore. <laughs> Please add some texture and yeah. more clothes. But what about personality wise? It's like personality wise, a lot of the games that I play that allow me to have a black woman are like games where they don't have a lot of personality. But, you know, like like my character isn't meant to really say much. It's just meant to, like, go on missions oh. and stuff. So we can talk about Overwatch for an example. As much as I really like the game, I think they have some things wrong. There are no unambiguous black women in there, which black girl gamers have been, like, saying on Twitter for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So personality-wise, I would like them to develop the character as a black person and not just develop the character and then slap a black face on it. How do you play these games without being a black girl gamers member? Can you play them online? Yeah, if you want to play with us, you're more than welcome to do so. On Twitter and Twitch, you can always just hop on and comment on something. And then if we're playing, you can hop in and play with us if you would like. That's no problem. You don't have to, like, sign up or something like that. Uh, we just look for other people to play with. And we just verify that, you know, you are a black girl gamer because there have been many people who try to get in and kind of have a toxic environment with that. Hi, my name is Joelle. What's your like favorite console to play on? My favorite console to play on um, would be the, the place where I can play with the most people at the time. So I have all of the consoles, but sometimes people are more available on PC. Sometimes people are more available on PlayStation. But as a person who knew that they wanted to be strong in the community, I purposely have all of the consoles because it's like, well, if you only have Xbox, I don't want to exclude you. I'm going to go hop on Xbox so we can play together. So wherever the most people People are, that's where I'm going to be. Hello, my name is Makai Coleman. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you, Makai. Do you get money from Twitch? Yes, I do. I'm a Twitch affiliate. So what happens is when people come by, they can sub, they can subscribe to my channel, and then I get, like, monthly from them. Or people can donate. So, like, say I'm playing a game and I do something really funny, and you're like, all right, you know, I'll give you $5. Or say, hey, I'm saving up to go to this huge tournament, you know, and I can fundraise and do stuff like that. So, yes, I do. Very minimal. You know, I, I'm not living off of it by any means. Some people are, but that's a rarity. That's a very rarity where people are solely and living comfortably off of Twitch. Like, I've not seen anyone buy a house from Twitch. I've seen people live in their apartment off of Twitch, but never buy a house or a car or fully support their family. Um, I got a question, though. Um, how to make Twitch as money, though? You know how to make one account, though, so I can broadcast streams and stuff. You don't have to be a Twitch affiliate to make money. People can just donate to you as you're playing, right? You can ask for donations. You can ask for those things. And then on Twitch, they have requirements that you meet to become an affiliate. And as you do that, then people are able to subscribe to you. But, you know, it's no different than anything that you could do, like on Mixer, which is another streaming yeah. platform. Yeah. Or, yeah, caffeine, I know what it is, so I or YouTube or Facebook. So, yeah. I'm a gamer as well. I play more female characters. Not mm -hmm. so much male characters. I do a little bit, mostly the female characters. Question, do you like to play more female characters or to the male characters? You know, at this point, I think it's automatic that I play, like, the darkest female character I can find. Like, it's a program in my head. Like, when I see characters, I'm like, oh, I want to play her. Like, when I started playing Tekken, and, you know, first it was, like, Eddie, 
Eddie was like the black one and he's Brazilian, but I thought he was Jamaican and I'm Jamaican. So I was like, oh, he's wearing Jamaican colors. You know, I'm going to pick him. And then when like Master Raven came through, I was like, yo, I want to play Master Raven. And she's like the hardest character to play. It's the same thing with Manat on Street Fighter. Manat's technically like African, right? So I was like, yo, I'm going to play Manat. She's the hardest character as well. So I think at this point, I accidentally just go for like the darkest character until I'm like, well, let me try other people. But that's usually who I start off with. Hope you don't mind me asking this. No. But how old are you? And how old were you when you started? I'm 27. I know I don't look it because I'm like in my head. Like I'm telling you, I, I was sick. Like I was sick, sick. So like I didn't look, I'm not leaving the house today, but I'm 27. And when I started, I graduated in 2013, so I was about 23. Then from 23 to about 25, I think I was like establishing myself and trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. And then 25 to about now is when is how like I started to be like, okay, I'm doing like esports stuff, and this is exactly what I wanted to do. I think my issue was, or I know my issue was, is I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just knew where I wanted to be, but I had no roadmap of how to get there. I had no idea what my position was called, and I was doing too many things. Anything that said video gaming, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do that, which in turn set me set me back some because it's like, say I was on path A, and then someone mentioned on path C video games, I would go do that. And then it would take me a couple steps back on path A, and I'm thinking it's going to take me further. So my biggest issue was doing too many things and not focusing on right. one thing. My name is Carlos, and my question is, um, did, did you have a YouTube account? I do have a YouTube account. People wa watch your videos? Yeah, I just posted one yesterday about someone who plays fighting games creating an after school program. And that's gotten a couple good views so far. I wouldn't say I'm like pulling in hundreds of views a day, but you know, some of mine have a thousand views and up. Yeah, cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Do you have anything else you like to share with our audience? I would say that playing video games can be a part of your life, but it needs to be balanced. And if you're playing video games, don't be a toxic or a trash person. Be a person that people want to play with online. Be a person that people will endorse online. Don't be the person that everybody wants to block and avoid as a teammate. Thank you for sharing with us today. And thank you for being with us on our interview. Thank Ooh. you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, you're a star podcast. It's produced by students at the Ray Grant Training Center High School in Chicago. With the production support of, from Actors School Matters and the Ukraine Imposter Studios, follow the party story. Facebook, Instagram, Scarf to also for free on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and follow us on Spotify. Our website is PowerYourStoryPodcast.com. Thank you for listening. And have a great day. <laughs>